What kind of king is crowned with thorns? Or robed in nakedness and shame? So cruelly beaten, mocked and scorned He bears the weight of all the blame What kind of king would stand condemned? Though innocent of every crime In silence offer no defense And take the place that should be mine Thank you for joining us today. Uh, another week of readings and reflections. Yesterday was Palm Sunday. Jesus was welcomed into Jerusalem. And if you joined in with QRBC or with another church, um, I'm sure there would have been a chance to focus on Jesus' arrival in Jerusalem. And that, of course, starts off Holy Week, starts off the chain of events which will eventually lead us to the darkness of Good Friday and then onto the glorious new light and life of Easter Day. But it's very easy, isn't it, to dash from Palm Sunday to Easter Sunday without paying too much attention to what happens in between. And yet the gospel writers spend so much of their time telling us these stories and spending time particularly on the stories of this week leading up to the cross. Jesus continues to teach. Jesus continues to heal, continues on with his life. So this week, we're going to focus on what Mark's gospel tells us about this week. We did this a few years ago, too. It seems that Jesus spent time during the day teaching in the temple. But his evenings he spent in Bethany, staying with his friends. Bethany is a village just outside the city of Jerusalem. It's on the eastern slopes of the Mount of Olives. Holy Week must have been a very strange week for Jesus. On the one hand, he knew things were coming to a head. But on the other, life just carries on as normal. Mark will tell us that the Jewish authorities are plotting, trying to silence Jesus. They're afraid of the crowds. And yet, here in our reading today, Jesus is at a dinner party. I guess for most people, even those around Jesus, this was a festival time, a time of gathering and a time of celebrating. We're going to read from Mark chapter 14, verses 1 to 11. Mark 14, 1 to 11. Now the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread were only two days away. And the chief priests and the teachers of the law were scheming to arrest Jesus secretly and kill him. But not during the festival, they said. Or the people may riot. While he was in Bethany, reclining at the table in the home of Simon uh, the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume made of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. Some of those present were saying indignantly to one another, why this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's wages and the money given to the poor. And they rebuked her harshly. Leave her alone, said Jesus. Why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you. You can help them any time you want, but you will not always have me. She did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare for my burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the chief priests to betray Jesus to them. They were delighted to hear this and promised to give him money. So he watched for an opportunity to hand him over. Look, so much is going on here. Chief priests and teachers of the law are plotting to kill Jesus. Jesus, one of the twelve, uh, sorry, Judas, one of the, the twelve, one of Jesus' friends, was obviously disillusioned with the direction Jesus was, was heading for and was, was betraying Jesus. Simon the leper, well, had he been healed by Jesus before, it seems likely, was entertaining Jesus, feeding Jesus, welcoming Jesus to his home. And then we have the woman who did a beautiful thing, to quote Jesus. And then those looking on, 
indignant with Jesus, perhaps embarrassed by Jesus. All of these people were responding to Jesus in different ways. Plotting, betraying, feeding, angry, embarrassed, worshipping, all these different emotions and responses going on in and around the table where Jesus was eating. Now I wonder if I had been there, how would I have responded? How would you have responded? Would I have been one of the plotters? Would I have been disillusioned, ready to betray? Would I have been angry at the waste? Would I have been embarrassed that Jesus allowed this woman to so show such emotion, be touched by her? In just a few days' time, Jesus will lose all dignity. He will face brutality, all the ugliness that humanity will throw at him. How should I respond now? Well, of course, our response should be like the woman who gave her all. So this Holy Week, as we're getting ready, journeying towards the cross, let us make space to engage with the stories, to journey with Jesus and his followers and respond with all our love and gratitude, worship and wonder. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that this woman did a beautiful thing for Jesus. We thank you that in amongst all of the ugliness of the thoughts and the emotions that were surrounding Jesus at that meal, there was something beautiful that encouraged him and lifted his spirits. Father, in all the ugliness of the world around us, we pray that we might be people who do beautiful things for Jesus. We pray that this week our response might be beautiful, might bring him honour and glory. Help us to engage with these stories afresh this week. Help us to journey to Easter. Help us to come on Easter Sunday, full of wonder and full of joy at what Jesus has done for us, the beautiful thing he has done for us. Amen. May we know the blessing of this amazing story this week.